Publius Valerius Publicola was one of four Roman aristocrats who led the overthrow of the monarchy, and became a Roman consul. The colleague of Lucius Junius Brutus in 509 BC, traditionally considered the first year of the Roman Republic. The authors of America's The Federalist Papers used the pseudonym Publius in his honor. Early life According to Livy and Plutarch, Publius Valerius Publicola's family came from the Sabine region. Under the Valerius name, they had settled in Rome during the rule of the king of the Sabines, Titus Tatius, and worked for the peaceful unification of both regions. Publius Valerius Publicola came from a wealthy family. His father was Volusius Valerius and his brothers were Marcus Valerius Volusius and Manius Valerius Maximus. He was married and Valeria was the name of his daughter. Before holding Roman public office, Publicola had defended the plebs as a benefactor. The revolution, with Lucius Tarquinius Calatinus, Spurius Lucretius Tricipitinus and Valerius, Lucius Junius Brutus led the Roman Revolution of 509 BC, ending the Roman monarchy and banishing the tyrannical king of Rome, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. The Romans instituted the office of consul, founding the Roman Republic. Brutus and Calatinus were voted as the first consuls. The Tarquins plotted with some disaffected Roman members of the Aquilian Vitellii, who had benefited from the deposed regime, to assassinate both consuls. Publicola was informed of the plot by the slave Indicius. Publicola investigated personally, sneaking into the Aquilius estate and finding incriminatory evidence. Using this evidence, both consuls headed a public trial. The conspirators, including Brutus' her own children, were found guilty and executed. Valerius played a leading role in the trial, election as consul, and Battle of Silver Arcia, 509 BC. Calatinus worked with Tarquinius' superbus relatives to restore their properties. After the failed conspiracy, Calatinus was denounced and left Rome, resigning his office of consul. Valerius was elected to replace him. The deposed king, Tarquinius Superbus, whose family originated from Tarquinii and Etruria, garnered the support of that city and also of Eri. The armies of the two cities followed Tarquin against Rome, and the Roman consuls Brutus and Valerius led the Roman army to meet him at the Battle of Silva Arcia. Valerius commanded the Roman infantry. Brutus died during the battle, but the Romans were ultimately victorious. Valerius collected the spoils of the routed Etruscans, and returned to Rome to celebrate a triumph on 1 March 509 BC. Publicola celebrated at Rome, riding a four-horse chariot, which subsequently became a Roman tradition for celebrating victories. Also, he held a magnificent funeral for Brutus where he made a memorable speech. Livy wrote that later in 509 BC Valerius returned to fight the Vientus. It is unclear whether this was continuing from the Battle of Silva Arcia or was some fresh dispute. It is also unclear what happened in this dispute. Reforms during First Consulship, 509 BC. After the death of Brutus, Publius Valerius Publicola was the lone Roman consul, which he held without scheduling new elections. He started to build a magnificent new residence on top of the Velian Hill, which was conspicuously visible from the Senate building. When people began to comment that he was apparently going to re-establish the monarchy, Publicola stopped its construction, demolishing it in a single night. Publicola defended himself before an assembly of the people, having firstly lowered the fasces in the face of the assembly as a mark of respect. I have just liberated Rome, bravely, but now I am slandered, like being either an Aquilius or a Vitellian. I am the bitterest enemy of the former kings, so I shouldn't be accused of wanting to be king. He volunteered to move his house to the foot rather than the peak of the Villian Hill, so as to diminish any suspicion leveled against him. His house was constructed at that site, where in later times was built the Temple of Victory. 
Before the impending elections, Publicola repopulated the Senate, which had been severely reduced by the king and the recent war. Also, he wrote a series of popular laws. Any Roman could be appointed consul. Decisions of the consuls could be appealed. Anyone who seized an office without popular vote would suffer execution. Anyone who attempted to re-establish the monarchy could be executed by any citizen without trial. Needy Romans were exempt from taxation. Patricians would be punished more severely than plebs for disobeying a consul. Control of the treasury was removed from the consuls. It was physically moved to the Temple of Saturn under the administration of appointed quaestors. Public Ola removed the axe heads of the traditional fasces as carried in the Pomerium, the sacred inner city of Rome. Because of these, Publicus Valerius was called the friend of the people, or Public Ola. Four consulships. Publius Valerius Publicola was elected Roman consul in 509 BC, 508 BC, 507 BC, and 504 BC. In 509 BC he held elections after the death of Brutus, and Spurius Lucretius Tricipitinus was chosen as consul suffectus. Lucretius died a few days later, and Marcus Horatius Pulvillus was elected in his place. In 508 BC and 504 BC his consular colleague was Titus Lucretius Tricipitinus. Marcus Horatius Pulvillus was his colleague again in 507 BC. War with Clusium. In 508 BC, Lars Porsena, the king of Clusium, attacked Rome at the behest of Tarquinius Superbus. According to Plutarch, both Publicola and his fellow consul Titus Lucretius were severely wounded during the battle. During the siege, Publicola executed a successful sally, defeating a Clusian raiding party. According to Plutarch, Valerius negotiated a peace treaty with Porsena which ended the war. He surrendered hostages, including his daughter Valeria, and Porsena protected these hostages from the Tarquinii. War with the Sabines In 506 BC, the Sabines attacked Rome. While his brother Marcus was consul, Publicola participated in two Roman victories which repelled the invasion. The people rewarded Publicola with a house on the Palatine Hill. In 505 BC, the Latin League and the Sabines threatened Rome with a large army. Although diplomatic negotiations were halted, Publicola meddled in the inner politics of the Sabines by assisting Attis Clausus. With Publicola's help, he moved into Rome with 5,000 Sabines. He was made a citizen with the name Appius Claudius, and was the founder of the Claudi. When the Sabines attempted to besiege Rome, Publicola successfully commanded the army, anticipating their movements and thwarting their plans. He was elected consul in 504 BC and conducted war successfully against the Sabines, and celebrated a triumph in May of that year. Death Publius Valerius Publicola died in 503 BC, shortly after passing the consular office to his successors, Agrippa Menenius Lanatus and Publius Postumius Tubitus. Livy records that at the time of his death he was considered by universal consent to be the ablest man in Rome, in the arts both of peace and war. He had little money and so he was buried at the public charge, and was mourned by the Roman matrons as had been done for Lucius Junius Brutus before him. By decree, each citizen contributed a quadrants for the funeral. The remains of Publicola were buried within Rome, at the Velian Hill. His death was mourned by the Romans for an entire year. After Publicola, all noted members of the Valerius family were buried near the same spot, Legacy. In a collection of 85 essays promoting the adoption of the United States Constitution, written in 1787 to 1788 by Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay, the three statesmen used the alonym Publius in honor of Publicola's role in establishing the Roman Republic. 
Following the Spanish-American War a piece titled The Duty of the American People as to the Philippines was published under the pseudonym Publicola. The author recommended the development of the Philippines to improve the lives of the Filipino people as well as to further American trading interests in the Orient.